Hello children, today I am going to teach you the first chapter of your social studies book and that is the story of the past. Now we will talk about the past. Uh, what is past? Let me give you an example. Before three months you were studying in class three, that was your past and now you are studying in class four, this is your present day situation. So the things and the days that we have been gone through are the past. Now what is the story of the past? The story of the past is known as history. In this chapter we are going to discuss the following topics. Define history, the need to study history, sources of history and the need to preserve historical sources. Now we will define history. History is the study of our past, a record of the events that happened long, long ago. It tells us about the life of the people during a particular period of time. It is a written document of the development of human civilization. It is the story of the progress of man from the beginning of civilization to the present time in a chronological order. Chronological order means written in a way that follows the order in which events had occurred. Since history is a continuous story, to understand it better, it is necessary to divide history into parts, which is called periods. So history has been divided into three periods. They are ancient period, medieval period and modern period. Now we will discuss about why do we need to study history. We need to study history because of the following reasons. Number one, history gives us a better understanding of the life of the people which means it tells us how people lived in the past, what was their food habit, what type of clothes they used to wear, their houses were made of which material. We can find the answer of all these questions by studying history. Secondly, through a study of the past, we understand the present better. We understand how the way of living changed from the past to the present. Since history is a continuous story or series of events, it will be difficult to understand the present in the absence of past. Third, history helps us to understand the events that are happening in the world today. For example, history helps us to understand why do we celebrate the national festivals like 15th August as Independence Day and 26th of January as Republic Day. Do you know the people who helped us to know history? The people who helped us to know history are historians and archaeologists. A historian is a person who studies the sources to find out about the past. Now we will discuss about the sources of history. Different kinds of materials that provide information about the past are called sources of history. Sources can be divided into two parts. Number one, literary sources. Number two, archaeological sources. Literary sources are handwritten records and in the past they were written on palm leaves, parchments and barks. In our country, India, most of the literary sources were written in languages like Sanskrit, Pali and Prakrit. In South India, Tamil and Telugu were used. Sometimes these written records were actually in the form of pictures and drawings. Literary sources are further divided into two parts. They are religious texts and non-religious texts. Some of the examples of religious texts are the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Puranas, and the religious texts of Jains and Buddhists. The non-religious texts are further divided into the following. Number one, 
written records of foreign travellers. Number two, accounts and edicts from the rulers. Some of the examples of non-religious texts are Kautilya's Arthashastra, Kalidasa's Abhigyan Shakuntalam and the Panchatantra by Vishnu Sharma. The writings of Hewen Sang is the example of written records of foreign travellers and Babur Nama and edicts of Ashoka are the examples of accounts and edicts from the rulers. The epics Ramayana and Mahabharata are considered as both religious and non-religious texts. The literary sources tell us about the society, life of the people and the culture of the period. Now we will move to archaeological sources. Archaeology means the study of the remains of the past. Many of these remains are buried under the earth and have to be dug out or excavated. Do you know who is an archaeologist? An archaeologist is a person who studies human history and prehistory through the excavation of sites and analyzes the artifacts and the other physical remains. Archaeological sources are of three kinds. Number one, monuments. Number two, inscriptions. Number three, other objects like seals and coins. Now we will see about the seals and coins in detail. Now what are the seals and why are they important? Seals are stamps or engravings or prints set in stone or metal. Seals were used during ancient civilizations and they provide us the knowledge about the people of those civilizations. Now coins. The study of coins is called numismatics. Ancient coins were made of gold, silver, copper or lead. Coins give us a lot of information about the ruler, the period he or she ruled, trade, interest of rulers and the economic conditions of that time. Now we will discuss about the inscriptions. Inscriptions are written records found on pillars, rocks, caves and copper plates. The earliest inscriptions are found on the Harappan seals. Inscriptions provide us with information about the names, titles of rulers, extent of their empire and royal orders. Now monuments. What are the monuments? Monuments are historical buildings that provide us with visual evidence of the life of the people of early times. From the monuments, we learn about the materials used for that particular monument, the influences of other cultures, the economic condition of the empire and the religious beliefs of those times. The Sanchi Stupa, Hawa Mahal and the Taj Mahal are some monuments in India. Now we will move to the topic need to preserve the historical sources. Preservation of historical sources is important. Why? Because the study of history is only possible if we preserve the historical sources. Preservation of historical sources involves a great deal of time, money and effort. But still it is important to preserve the sources of history because of the following reasons. First one, history plays an important role in our lives. Lessons which influences our present and benefit our future. History helps us to understand other cultures. 
it also helps us to become good global citizens. Third, historical literature and architecture are a proof of the struggle and success achieved by our ancestors. Fourth, historical sites are a major tourist attraction and thus help in generating revenue. So, our literary and archaeological sources give us a sense of pride in our culture and heritage. As citizens of this country, it is our duty to preserve these rich inheritance. We should take care of the monuments by not writing on them or disfiguring them. The government cannot preserve this rich heritage without our support.